quantum has grown, obviously, um, over the last 20 years since uh, you studied the, on the subject. And it has now like, quite defined verticals, as I understand. So we are talking about quantum communications network, quantum enabled devices, and quantum computers. So can you tell us what are the differences between th these three sort of verticals? Right. So that's a very good question. Yes, the industry and the science uh, is kind of common behind all these three. Uh, it's the science part in, the, in terms of uh, quantum physics as an en enable to do either better sensing devices, that's what quantum sensors are, to start from that, where you can make much more efficient and accurate detectors, let's say, of gravity, which you can use to detect whether underneath the earth there is oil or there is a gap or there is water, uh, or very finely tuned clocks, atomic clocks, that can calculate time in a much better efficiency. That's under the sensors, or you can make many, many uh, really efficient um, detectors of various chemicals based on quantum physics. That's the quantum sensor side. It's, it's a, on the industry now level, it's a technology that is quite evolved. Uh, there, there, are, there are prototypes out there that also, uh, you know, made here in Singapore that work and there's some startups on that side. Uh, there is quantum communication is the second part, which is about secure communication, secure messaging between um, sender and receivers. Because as you know, the first thing quantum computers will do will break cryptography, will break crypto systems, will break the RSA protocols. Uh, we have the proofs, we have the algorithms. Of course, the hardware is not there yet, but nobody knows when it will happen. So this is exactly why we need quantum communication, quantum secure communications, which is the counterpart, is the alternative for um, uh, uh, to build quantum safe um, uh, uh, encryption. So, and the first part, which is where I work and is most of my research um, focus is quantum computing. So, quantum computing, you can imagine it in a very rough way as a super fast super efficient computing, but that's, that's something I don't really like so much to, to put it in. It's just very different computing than anything else we had as a, as a human race. All the way from the antiquity and the abacus to the supercomputers of today. The abacus is this very basic device that my ancestors, the Greek or the Babylonians, used to calculate one by one. Actually, our classical computers still calculate one by one. Quantum is something very, very different. It's based on quantum physics and allows you to, to exploit very complicated notions of, but very real notions of nature in superposition and entanglement to develop algorithms that can do much more than anything else we know as humankind so far. This can have applications in, in um, optimizing networks, in transport, in sustainability, in the finance sector, in, in machine learning and optimization, as we say, which cover a lot of areas. You can do quantum enhanced um, versions of all these things to really outperform and solve, outperform classical computers and solve unsolved problems in, in, in industry so far. Right. Um, you talk about uh, optimization problems, simulations, uh, machine learning type uh, applications. So all these are potential uh, areas that uh, where quantum computer can come in and perform better than our classical computers because of its uh, quantum properties like entanglement. That's that you and yeah, right. Um, so what are so you mentioned in your talk earlier as well for an organization who is looking to be quantum ready or you know thinking about quantum one of the first steps they have to think about is thinking about whether in their organization they have any sort of optimization problems so that is a potential area where they can think about using quantum because quantum is a lot better than classical computers very very yes very good very good exactly to the point jane the entry point is, is very simple. First of all, organizations need to, this is new technology, and, and they, are, they are justifiably kind of worried, what does this do? How does it work? Especially as quantum is so exotic and esoteric. One entry point is to see on the digital adoption, on the 
classical computing adoption, what kind of tools they use for their use cases, for their sales, for their operations. Quite often, some companies, larger corporations, but also smaller ones, already are exploiting some basic AI or basic optimization tools to a certain level, quite often in a very preliminary level. Then one way is to see what are the bottlenecks next. Do they get very inaccurate solutions or it's very inefficient or very slow? Then there could be quantum enhanced layers on top and that's what we can do for them. We can help them to develop those quantum capabilities that go and sit on top of their classical AI tools to provide a, uh, an enhancement, an improvement. And at the same time...